There we go. Once again, welcome to WordPress roles and capabilities. I'm super excited to bring this topic to you all. Um, as I used to work with um, enterprise WordPress clients and roles and capabilities was definitely something that came up quite a bit for folks that had a more customized um, WordPress instance. But even if you are using out of the box WordPress, you'll get a lot out of this session. Um, and thank you for all sharing where you're coming from. Uh, for the record, we have some folks in Europe, even in the US, even though it's so early, I really appreciate you all coming and spending some time with us today. Um, and for your viewing pleasure, please turn on the live transcription, which has been enabled if you'd like to follow along with some subtitles. Um, in terms of asking questions, you can unmute to ask a question. You can ask it in chat if you're shy. You can also direct message it to Amit or myself, and we'll try to take care of it during the call. And then also, if you have the answer to something that someone has questioned, feel free to share that. I love to be humbled and learn something new from people who are participating in this online workshop as well. Um, but while you're not speaking, kindly mute your mic so we don't get some background noise. And if this kind of online workshop is something you're interested in, definitely reach out to me. These are run by volunteers. I would be happy to help you get set up on um, running your own online workshop with us someday. Okay, let's have, let's dive into it. So what we're gonna talk about today is in general, we're gonna have a user overview. What are users in WordPress? What are roles, capabilities? Then we're gonna deep dive into that a bit further. What are the out of the box roles and capabilities with WordPress? We're gonna get a little bit into modifying these roles and capabilities. We had a question about custom roles that will come into play here. And then if we have some time, I would also like to allow for a Q&A session. And I'll try to answer everyone's questions. If I am not able to answer on this call, I will find that answer for you and return with an answer um, in a follow-up. All right, so getting started here. So users, when we're inside of our install of WordPress, I created this, this GIF for us all. Um, this section is just users and all users. That's where you can see the users listed for your site and also add new users. When you get to the add new users section, you're gonna have a list of options and we'll, we'll dive into that. Those options are basically roles, right? And what these roles are doing is they're giving you, your users on your site, a certain permission level within WordPress. So if they do not have that permission level required to access a certain page or do a, a certain function, they'll get something along the lines of, you're not allowed to access this, or you're not allowed to do that. Um, in the past, this these roles were numbered from about one to 10, but now, Technically speaking here, they're identified as, as by a string. And in general, you can think of roles as buckets of capabilities. So one role could have a certain amount of capabilities tied to it. So the roles that we have in WordPress, I've listed six here. The first one is specific to multi-sites. Uh, multi and so if you have just a single site WordPress install, the super administrator is not going to uh, really be an option for you, but I wanted to list this here so that you have all of the options. So for WordPress out of the box, the default would be administrator, editor, author, contributor, and then subscriber. And then the WordPress multi-site install has six, which includes that super administrator. And I've set that at the top, and this is this purposeful hierarchy here, because the super administrator, when you have that for the multi-site, basically can do all the things that all of these roles can do. And so if we work down this one through six, um, administrator has everything three through six has, and author, you know, five through six. So it'll go down in that kind of ladder. So with that being said, the, all of these roles have certain capabilities, and this is not an exhaustive list here, um, but what would a capability look like? That would look like something like being able to create a site, delete a site, manage the options of a site, or edit other people's posts, could be deleting posts, editing their own posts, so edit posts, and reading, just being able to read posts. Um, and therefore, these capabilities are granular permissions that control whether or not a certain action is possible for a role. 
in, ter in technical terms, um, roles consist of unordered lists of capabilities that are identified by a string. It's also possible to add individual, individual capabilities to user roles. So like if you want to add a create site to a certain role, um, however, it's better to create specific user roles with groupings of capabilities instead of just creating one role that has only one capability. Um, usually that person on your site would need more than just one capability on the site itself. So stopping here, do we have any questions about the differences between roles and capabilities or how they come to play together? Nope. <laughs> Thanks. Everything well explained. Thank you. Okay. Well, if anything comes up, that's totally fine. I'll, I'll stop to answer your question. I'm not always the fastest typer myself. So um, just know that I'll keep an eye out for you if you have a question still. So moving along here, I'm not going to go through every single thing, but I do want to showcase in the this table here what their roles are versus their capabilities. And this is a table that I've simply pulled out of the wordpress.org um, handbook support page. And you can see it listed there. I've made it a bit prettier, I think, because it's in a, in a bit of a table that's hard to scroll through. Um, but simply put here, the super admin will have access to everything that's listed here. Um, within create sites, delete sites, manage the network. Some of these are multi-site specific because it is a super admin, which is for multi-site. And then moving along, this table, I highly recommend people who are looking to customize roles or just want to better understand which role has access to what. Um, on the capability side here, it's written as you would code it essentially, um, but it's also written in a way that you can understand you know, what capability this role would have. So for example, an administrator in this section would be able to um, create users or delete plugins or edit the theme options or create an export or import of the site. And this is going where the admin can also do all the, the super admin can also do all of these things. Moving, moving further along here as a continued, because administrator is pretty powerful. So I think this is a good showing of which roles kind of hold a lot of the keys to the site itself um, in terms of installing plugins, themes, the administrator is basically the one that can do this along with the super admin, removing users, promoting them. They have a lot of power on the site. As we go a little further down the tier here, the editor will have everything listed from here on, moderating comments, managing categories, editing pages, editing others' pages. So not just their own, but the pages of other people who are on this site, publishing pages, deleting pages, deleting others' pages, anyone else's pages are on the site. So the editor is usually great for people who or this role is great for people who are um, ma maybe managing a team of writers, right? You wanna be able to edit other people's posts and manage that their posts as well and manage all of the posts of the site or pages. And as you can see, super admin administrator, they have access to all of that as well. This is just a continuation, um, but the editor role is great for people who need to manage the content of the site completely. Going further down here, we have the author role. And you can see here, they're, they're able to edit posts, publish posts, delete published posts, but you don't see anything about others here. And that's because they are able to um, create their own posts and manage those, but not necessarily the posts of others. So this is a step down from the editor role who has control of all the posts and pages of the site and can edit those. So these would be, you know, the worker bees of this content creation team, content creation team in a way, if we think of this example, um, they're the ones just creating the, 
the news of the day, sending it to their editor and um, publishing it. And then a step down from that would be a contributor and they would be able to edit posts and delete posts. Includes own pages as well. I believe so, yes. And we're actually, I'm gonna show you an example of all of these roles too. Um, but as you can see, as we get further and further down the ladder, the capabilities of each role just lessens and lessens. So um, the key thing here is super administrator, if you have a multi-site has the power to do every single thing, administrator, everything except what the super admin can do. And it goes the same way um, as you go further down the chain. Um, but what every single one can do is read. <laughs> and so subscriber would be someone, you, you usually see this on um, WordPress sites or people's sites where it's like, you know, subscribe to my site, my blog, newsletter. Um, these folks would just have access to read the posts or pages that you put out on the site, but no capability to edit that content. Okay, so that being said, I also want to show you all what all of these roles look like in the back end and what they are able to see and do. And um, folks who have joined my online workshops before usually see me running through all of this stuff, but we have an awesome tutorial that Wes Theron put together that showcases this for us. So I think it'll be best for him to explain it for us all today. So let me share this. I'm going to do share my sound. If you cannot hear my sound, um, please let me know. Or if it's too loud, let me know too, and I'll try to lower it. But here we go. In WordPress, you can assign roles, which was designed to give the site owner the ability to control what users can and cannot do within the site. There are different roles to explore and each role is allowed to perform a set of tasks. Knowing the differences is important as it will help you keep your site protected and ensure that your editors and contributors are informed about their abilities and the part that they play. In this video, we will explain five roles and their capabilities and explore what the dashboard looks like from the perspective of each role. The five main roles you can assign are the administrator, editor, author, contributor, and subscriber. Let's start with the administrator. Upon installing WordPress, an administrator role is automatically created, and it is somebody who has access to all the administration features within a single site. For multi-site owners, the super admin has these capabilities. Next, we have the editor. The editor is somebody who can publish and manage posts, including the posts of other users. An author, on the other hand, is somebody who can only publish and manage their own posts. Then we move on to a contributor. This is somebody who can write and manage their own posts, but cannot publish them. And lastly, a subscriber is somebody who can only manage their profile and is usually meant for subscription type websites. The administrator is at the top of the WordPress ladder and there is usually only one per website. As mentioned, the administrator is somebody who has access to all the administration features within a single site. The administrator can publish, edit and delete posts and pages, edit code, they can manage media, plugins, themes, other accounts and settings. They basically have the keys to all the doors of the site. The administrator can update their profile top right of their dashboard page or by making their way to users, clicking on profile and making the necessary updates there. The administrator also has the power to create and manage other users. To create a new user, click on add new. On the add new user page, Create a new user by assigning them a username, a valid email address, and any other optional details. Then, choose an appropriate role for this user. And when you are ready, click Add New User. 
a new user will automatically be sent a welcome email by WordPress with their new login information, including the generated password. The user will be prompted to log in and to change their password to one of their liking. To change the role of an existing user, you can select Edit, open the Role drop-down, and select a different role or no role for the site at all. If you would like to change the role of multiple users, you can use the checkboxes to the left of the user to make the changes simultaneously. If you delete a user, you have the option to delete all the content they have created or to reassign it to a different user. And once you have made your choice, click on Confirm Deletion. To customize the view of the Users table, click on Screen Options top right. Here you can specify which columns you would like to view and the number of users you want to view per page. And once you are done, click Apply. It is possible to give visitors to your website the ability to register their own accounts to minimize the need for you to create new users. This is usually used for the subscriber role. To do that, go to Settings and click on General. And next to New User Default Role, make the necessary changes. Editors have high level of access as they usually manage content. Let's see what the dashboard looks like for an editor. An editor is someone who can create, edit, publish and delete posts and pages, including the posts of other users. They are also capable of managing media and comments. So what can't they do? Editors cannot install themes, plugins or approve any updates. They also don't have access to any site settings. Their role is to manage the work of other users and contributors. The role of an author is in the name. Their role is to provide content to the site and nothing else. They are therefore only able to publish and manage their own posts and not those of others. As you will notice, they can upload media and create, edit, publish and delete their own posts. They also have the ability to create and delete reusable blocks. Authors are therefore only in charge of adding content to a site and don't have any administrative rights. Let's say you have somebody who is willing to contribute content to your site as a once-off, while then the role of contributor is perfect for that individual. Seeing that they are not one of the authors, they will only be able to write and manage their posts but cannot publish them. A contributor cannot upload media files and when they publish content, it will first be reviewed before publishing. As you will notice, it is almost the same as being an author, but with a few more limitations. The last role we will be looking at is the subscriber. Subscribers only have access to managing their own profiles and nothing else. If we enter the dashboard of a subscriber, we will see they can only read all the posts on the site and change their profiles. This is not a role that will be used on many sites, mostly subscription-based websites. And finally, you may also decide to search and install a user role plugin to extend this feature's functionality. All the best managing the various user roles you wish to assign. And visit. Thanks, Wes. <laughs> but I thought he gave a really great overview of and showing of each role in the back end um, with this material here. With that being said, are there any questions about? what was just shared or any areas you would like to explore a little further within the WP admin? Oh, it looks like I was, I was a little off. Yeah, Amit, I saw it only posts available for the author role. Am I misunderstanding there? Hmm, is that with a customization? Sorry, for people on the record here, we're still talking about whether or not authors can manage posts or pages because in the tutorial we just saw, we only saw when you're in the author 
um, range that posts showed up. So we're, we're wondering now if the author role needs customization for the pages section to show for them. And feel free to unmute too, I mean, if that's faster. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, Destiny to just add into that, uh, since there are two content types, right? Posts and pages. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is possible for author since they are given um, higher privileges, right? So once they get access to posts, and so they get access to pages as well. So if it is author, it is possible uh, for pages and posts both. Hmm. Then I'm curious why it didn't show in the the back end when we went over the author role. Is that not a default setting? Or do you have to enable that setting? Yeah, I guess that otherwise, I mean, you know, the documentation shows that it is possible. Okay, can you share um, that link when you get a chance? Yeah, yeah, sure. I will be doing that, yeah. And then we can also, um, I can create an author account on the um, during the session today, and we can just have a look there and see um, that setting as well. Yeah, I'm only confused about the WordPress version, but yeah, it was possible. But yeah, we can we can check it like with the latest one. Yeah, if that yeah. menu is or not default one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna get that figured out. But um, are there any other questions folks had, or anything else that seemed a little confusing that we should clarify? All right, um, well, if anything comes up, feel free. Uh, we're gonna continue along here um, because part of the other aspect of this is how do you modify change roles or capability? And as noted in the tutorial we just watched together, there are two non-technical ways to do this. You know, By assigning different roles in the WP admin on that user roles page, you can do the edit um, and change role two or you can go into their profile and change their, their role from there. Or alternatively, you can modify roles and capabilities by installing a plugin to do this. Um, and there were many options shown there for folks to, to look for. Um, but for more technical folk, um, you can use something a bit more programmatic, which is you know PHP helper functions, or you using WP CLI. This is not at all a very technical um, online workshop, but I do want to show you all what that would look like. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on it, but I want to show you just so you have that information um, and you can explore that further. Because in our table that we were looking at before, comparing the roles versus capabilities, those are kind of giving you the plugs to what you would put in for the code that we're gonna look at here. So what does this look like technically? And I'm gonna start out here with a little note about custom roles, cause this came up as well as a question. Um, so by activation hooks, um, meaning things like backend initiating when a plugin is activated is how you can create a custom role, but why would you create a custom role is something that I want folks to consider with this as well. Like it is possible, they can be added and removed. Um, you wanna ensure that the core roles aren't removed. So they're assumed to exist, meaning, you know, admin, super admin, author, editor, um, contributor, all of those shouldn't technically not be, well, in best practice should not be fully removed from the site. They should be kept as they are, even when you add new custom roles. Um, and also they, they're persistent. So additions and removals are normally done on the activation hooks, um, which is what I was noting before. Um, but yeah, that question, why, why would you do this? And in my experience, it really depends on the use case. So um, certain users, some user roles will already have a lot of power on the site or only some capabilities um, that WordPress has to offer. But if you have a single user who requires special, special capabilities, um, a single role assignment may suffice. So 
Um, but if you have multiple users who require specific capabilities in their role, it may make more sense to create and assign them a custom role. So for example, if you have a, a hybrid of a author that maybe, or an editor that maybe needs to have some admin capabilities, um, and this maybe in this scenario, it is someone who's not only managing a content creation team, but is also project managing the site um, themes and plugins aspect. So if you were just an editor, you know, you would not be able to have the admin roles, but you can create a new role, which would be a hybrid of what is needed, like being able to access the themes and the plugins uh, on the site, plus all of the things that an editor can do. And if you have multiple teams doing this um, on the site, uh, multiple people in this role, um, it might make sense to then create a custom role for your use case. Um, if it's only one person doing this one thing, it might make more sense to use an out of the box WordPress role, depending, um, instead of creating this, this new, very special role. So I always just want folks to consider the use case when trying to create a custom role, because um, it, may, it usually makes more sense if multiple people are in, are in this role versus just one. Okay, so um, we, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read the chat here. We've got another note from our discussion around the author role and its capabilities. So we've noted for the record, yes. So editor role pages are possible for author. It's not possible. Yeah, the author cannot manage pages, but only posts. But as we were kind of discussing, if you wanted an author who can also manage the content of posts, this is where you can create a custom author role to do so. Thanks for getting the, the final word on that, Amit. This is why it's, you know, we're all learning here. <laughs> okay, so a bit of technical stuff here. So the, for anyone that's more technically minded, um, you can use the PHP helper functions such as listed to add a new role, um, merge role capabilities, this is role caps. You can override role caps capabilities, duplicate a role, because maybe you might want to add a new role, but just duplicate all of the uh, capabilities that role has. Um, add role caps. Honestly, reading it non-technically, you can still kind of understand what these functions are trying to do, right? And so that's why I just want to expose you a little bit to what's happening here. So you would have these functions and then you would pair them with the capability. So that would be something like being able to edit posts, this new author, being able to edit pages, um, maybe also be able to, if they needed to in this editor role, who's controlling a lot, manage sites as well. Um, so you, whenever you're creating a new role or customizing a role, um, you can use all of these capabilities that are maybe outside of the role usually to customize it further. So this is the PHP version of, of adding a new role. And simply reading it here, what you're, what you're trying to do is add a role. The name of this role is the guest author for this site, this test domain. And what do we want this, this role to be able to do? We want them to be able to read posts and pages. So that is set to true. Now you're able to do that as this guest author. We also want them to be able to edit posts. That is set to true. So this guest author can edit posts, um, but they cannot delete posts because this is set to false. So they would almost be equivalent to a contributor, um, even though it's called a guest author, right? Because a contributor can create their own posts, read posts, but they can't really publish their posts and maybe not even delete them. Um, the other example I had here was going back to WP CLI. This is also, um, and I'm sorry, I had also some notes and links for you all. So let me share where I'm getting this information from. <laughs> for folks that want to look at these examples a bit more deeply, um, even just out of curiosity. Um, WPCLI as well, here's the links to this. 
And yes, um, a meet noted WCLI is a tool that enables you to interact with your WordPress site directly by using commands in a text-based interface. Um, it sounds intimidating at first, but I find it actually to be very helpful and um, definitely a step below going into PHP <laughs> uh, because it reads as it does. Um, so for example, if you're gonna add a new role or create a new role here, you would do WP role create, role key would be the name of the role. Um, again, role name, what is gonna be shown is a prover in this case. And then this is a clone flag here. So we wanna clone the capabilities of another role in this example. So once that is said and done, you will have created in this example, a role called a prover and it's cloned the um, capabilities of another role. Sorry, I didn't have that written here. So I'll correct that for later. Um, and then capabilities here, it would be WP cap, which is capability. Then you're going to add a capability um, to this role, which is approver. And the capability in this example would be vetting. So maybe this approver role is someone who vets posts or approves posts. So that would be a WP CLI uh, way of doing this. As I said, I'm not going to get too deep into that, but I wanted to expose you all into other ways of customizing or even just viewing the roles and capabilities of your site. And if you want to dig a little further into that, I've just shared the, the links. Whew. So that was a lot of information, um, technical, non-technical, but I did want to also save some time for you all to ask questions about the, the roles and capabilities. I'm happy to also um, jump into my local environment and show you on the WP admin what, what things look like as well. Yeah, so WP CL CLI is typically run from your computer's terminal <laughs> after being connected to your site. So let me get the WP CLI um, setup information. I've used it in the past in my work, just servicing sites. There's a lot you can do with it. You can turn on and turn off plugins. You can edit users. You can um, adjust your Jetpack connection if you use that on your site. You can change the um, domain of your site through search replay. There's so many capabilities here. Oh, let me get the installing. And you know, what? I'll also see if we have a um, tutorial as well out on how to use this because I I like to share other ways of learning here. Um, it took me a bit of self learning as well to to fully understand its capabilities. But once it's set up, it's 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 really really nice. Any other questions, folks, or things you want to have a look at in the back end in the WP admin? My friends in the USA must be like, oh, I'm just I'm just ready to go to bed. <laughs> All right, we got from David. Um, the last part was a bit helpful for me. I'm realizing that plugins are money grab. They do everything that way. <laughs> uh, use bare bone web dev tools instead of plugins. You know, you can really go far with what's already available. I do understand that it does take, you know, a bit of digging in and, and just taking the time to learn it. Um, and I was very intimidated by WPCLI at first. I was not very technical. Um, but once I got into it, I was like, how do, how do I, how would I not use this before? <laughs> you just have so much, you're not getting too deep into the code of your site, but you have so much access and insight into your site, um, just using this tool. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad you found that helpful. I'm glad my little, my sneaking in of <laughs> the technical bits was helpful for you. 
excited or something new to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we need a WPCLI session, huh? <laughs> I'm sure I can arrange that. Sandra says, oh yes, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. I've got I've got it noted. <laughs> all right. Well then, oh. feel like there are very few tutorials online that dig deep into that stuff right now. Currently, everything is saturated with how to do things for a beginner. That's very true. Um, I think right now, especially with 6.1 coming up soon, um, a lot of trainings are focused around getting people to not be scared of the block editor and block themes and, you know, like just dive in. Um, but we do have some uh, te more technical content creators with us now, uh, Amit included, who are definitely capable of putting on a bit more advanced um, sessions as well. Um, so I, I really do think we should have that WPCLI session. I want to show the world that how useful that is. Uh, and I'm happy to also float your feedback, David, about you know wanting to dig a bit deeper into you know this te the technical or web development of WordPress. <laughs> All right, you see that? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna do the WPCLI session. <laughs> yes, that's right. On the Learn WordPress site, we're we're still um, working to ensure that folks can find the content they they need and what they're looking for. So those filters will definitely be useful. Okay, so uh, I need to add WPCLI to this keep on learning <laughs> slide, but I wanted to leave you all with a few things here. Um, definitely check out that full tutorial on user management. I just took that one little piece out because I felt that was the most relevant for our discussion today. Um, and then, you know, non-technical, try installing and playing with a role plugin to see how that can enhance your site, hopefully a free one. <laughs> um, and then also try adding a new user with a different role to your test site uh, and changing it like how we saw in the video today. And then for more technical folks, you know, try to do the WPCLI ad role creation. If, once that's installed, thank you so much, I mean, for sharing a tutorial of how to do that. And, um, and if you are into PHP, Try to do that with uh, the helper function we, sh we shared today. So Sandra asks, is it possible to give a role only access to a certain page? I feel like we're getting into meta um, capabilities now. <laughs> Amit, do you know about this? Yeah. <laughs> so me is saying yes by knowing pa the page ID and then customizations again. I mean, you might even be getting into like, if a page is tagged a certain way, kind of access. Um, but that is quite complicated. <laughs> Is your use case, Sandra, like maybe you have a, a website where only like paid users should access a certain page or, or some re readers should only see the science versus the news <laughs> articles <laughs> or science versus the, uh, what other, what other media is there? I don't know, cinema articles. <laughs>
Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Okay, so Sandra clarified here, um, wanting users to only work on certain pages and not the general pages, like home. So yes, with customization, that is possible um, to lock down certain pages to, to certain roles. Um, in that case, I would just have, I would just, once again, talk, think about like, how many times this is going to happen? Is, should it be a page or should it be a post? Um, if it's something, you know, that's not going to be more evergreen, because usually pages, you know, stay on the site a little longer than a post, um, which would be edited more frequently. And yes, so David is noting publish press permissions as a, a plugin to kind of help with separating access to certain roles. Um, and but I meet counters with it is recommended to customize. And I want to plus to that the reason why customization, even though it, it might take either you doing the technical bit or you know hiring someone else to do that is because plugins can don't usually just serve the one purpose you want, right? So you might wind up with a plugin that's adding a bunch of capabilities and functionality when you only want one thing. And that's where um, customization of you know out of the box WordPress or the simple role, it becomes a bit more performant and better for your use case. Yeah, you're very welcome. These are great questions. I love this. <laughs> keep firing, like keep firing away. We have time. Mm. Yeah, no one likes a, a plug-in bloated uh, website, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, David, no worries. If it's like a general plug-in question related to roles, I'm happy to try to, to work through that. So Sandra asks, is there a way to simulate what a certain user sees without login with this account? I know it from typo three. This sounds like a custom functionality for the site for maybe some person's user role to be able to um, preview site as certain role. It wouldn't be um, an out of the box WordPress functionality. Yeah, and with that as well, you always want to consider, you know, if you're going to try to see what, if it's a general user role, I think that's fine. But if you're trying to see what a certain registered account sees, um, I think that gets a bit trickier in terms of like privacy and, and all of that as well. Oh, okay. So David's noting they're using Metabox AIO and doesn't provide a new capability, doesn't let him them provide a new capability for a new custom post type. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can get your money back and code it yourself. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Yeah, that that really happens, and I've had customers come to me in the past before too. Like, ah, oh, this 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 seems perfect, but it, it just doesn't do this one thing. And it's like, well, I know it's a bit, maybe a bit more of spend, but when you just you know customize it via contract or yourself, 
um, then you get exactly what you want. Um, but I understand too, you know, you're just like, you plug, you plug it in and you're like, yeah, this is, this might be the thing. Um, but sometimes it lets you down. But I hope, yeah, you can get that sorted. Um, I'm happy to see, or I mean, I don't know if in your experience, you have any recommendations for better capabilities to a new custom post type, but a plugin that's not too bulky. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are some good plugins, but again, like they are scenario specific, like, like ad minimized yeah. user roles and all, right? So nowadays many plugins are coming, but it is always recommended, right? That we check what are the compatibilities of plugin because what I mm -hmm. notice is that when we install the plugin and then, you know, the latest version of WordPress comes up, but the plugin author has, haven't, uh, you know, done the compatibility check and all, and then that is where the issue starts to happen, right? So it is highly recommended that, you know, we check our requirement if it is a specific to a single requirement or generic, and then we adapt that plugin because for user roles, it is, uh, as what Destiny you have told, right? That user role uh, is the plugin, right? Which is mostly popular, but going for the other plugins are like rare ones, right? So mm -hmm. it is like use case specific again. And I would also say, um, usually these well-known plugins, they have a pretty active um, support team as well. So maybe even before you even install, you can share like, hey, this is my list of requirements <laughs> with their support team. Like, will, will this plugin suffice? Um, I find that, especially in enterprise business, like people are a little worried or scared to just talk directly with the plugin creators. Um, but these creators are part of, of this community, right? So um, I think it's always worthwhile to, to just reach out to them and, and ask directly so that you don't feel like your time was wasted and you can get maybe a recommendation from them as well as to what might be a better solution. Excellent questions, y'all. Well, just moving along here, I and feel free to keep asking questions. But uh, in order to keep this a little more long lasting, if you haven't already, I invite you to join the Make WordPress Slack. I believe Sandra, you you also joined recently, <laughs> um, and you know, messaging me there. Um, is something you can do. I've received a request to put this on, this exact roles and capabilities online workshop on. So if you're like, hey, Destiny, I'd like to learn about this, I might be able to teach it or I can find someone that can teach it. Um, I'm always open to receiving your feedback about what you'd like to learn because um, that's 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 my job actually, is helping you all learn something new um, and also learning something new together with me. And if there's anything else you'd like to learn, um, I highly recommend you to check out our online workshops calendar or see what's going on in the training team. And you can do that here. I'm gonna also be sharing these slides with you in a follow-up email. So if you don't catch every link right now, that's okay. You can, you can grab it after. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate your time today, everyone, and all of the awesome questions I got. As I noted earlier in the call, I'll be running this session again, maybe with a few tweaks with uh, some more information on like the PCLI and, <laughs> and things like that. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you all sharing your, your day with me and I hope you enjoyed and, and got the most out of this. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sandra. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you, David. Cheers to everyone. I'm going to stop the recording so it's not just a
a gush fest. <laughs> there you go.